In this lesson, we will learn about the theme tags. So what are the theme tags? Theme tags are the tags that you'll be using to output template-specific HTML markups. Now, this is completely different from the content object that we covered in the previous lessons. Now, the difference is theme tags, you can specify what HTML markups you can output. Whereas with content object, that's basically it. You can't do anything about that object. You can customize that. You can't customize that. That's what I'm trying to say. So with um, theme tags, you'll be able to specify what HTML markups you can output. The next is to tell the Shopify theme what layout and snippets to use. In other words, you can use theme tags to easily change the layout of your Shopify theme. The last is you can use theme tags to split an array into multiple pages. Now, there are only 10 theme tags that you can use. First is the comment, second is the echo, third is the form, then layout, then liquid, then paginate, raw, render, section, and lastly, style. We're going to talk about this one by one, except the form. I'll talk about that later. But first, let's talk about the comment tag. So the comment tag will allow you to leave unrendered code inside a liquid template. So whatever is inside of that tag will not be rendered. It's just going to be inside of the liquid file. So we have the following example. My name is Wilson Abercrombie. We have the following comment tag. And inside of the comment tag, we have the following static text, Esquire. And the output is my name is Wilson Abercrombie and we don't have the Esquire. And that's because it's inside of the comment tag. So whatever is inside of the comment tag, it will not be rendered, okay? So usually we use this to make notes. So for example, if we go back to our theme code editor, I usually use the comment tag to make notes. So let's create the tag comment. And don't forget to close it using the end tag. So end comment. So inside of the comment tag, you can type anything that you want. You can use it as a note. So, so for example, we can describe first this file. So the theme file, the theme that liquid file is the layout or the main layout used by the Shopify theme. And then you can also like say who made this. So the author, you can type your name and then the version, you can type 1.0.0.1 or something. So this is where you can type all of these um, notes. So sometimes I use this to, you know, remind myself what I'm going to do next or tomorrow. So for example, I stopped working today and I want to continue this tomorrow. I'll just say something here like, um, I'm going to continue my work which is on, which is the line, I don't know, like 30. And then on line 30, I have like another comment, like comment. And then I'm going to say like, continue this work tomorrow. Something like that. So, and comment. So I usually do this for my project, especially if um, it's really confusing. Like I have plenty of work, like I'm working on another file and then I'm working on this file, on that file. So I make notes just to remind myself that this is what I'm going to do in this, um, in this file, okay? So that's what the comment tag does. So it's not going to render anything inside of it. It's just um, used to, um, you know, for notes, okay? So let's save this. If we try to save that and if we open our Shopify store, it's not going to render anything, okay? It's just inside of the liquid file. So the next tag that we can use is the echo tag. So the echo tag outputs an expression in the rendered HTML. This is identical to the object. So if you remember, we have the following object, right? So you can use echo as well to output the value of an object. Say for example here, in the table row, we have the following index object or variable, right? So you can output the value of this index as well by using the echo tag. So instead of outputting it like an object, you can use the echo tag and then pass the index, something like that. 
and you can close it like so. And you don't have to use the end tag, okay? It's just like a single tag. So now if you save this, if you go back to your Shopify store, you should output the same thing. And you can also say, for example, let's change this. Instead of index, we can just say, um, hi. So if I save this, and if I refresh our Shopify store, as you can see, I have hi, and that's the echo, okay? So the echo tag is usually used with the liquid tag. So we're going to cover that later after the layout. So the next tag that we're going to use is the form. Now the form is a tag that creates an HTML form element, an HTML form element, okay? along with the required input elements to submit the form to a particular endpoint. Now, I'm not going to explain all of this because there are plenty of types for the form tag, but we can just use an example. Say for example, we use the contact. We can use this form to make a form tag. So like I said, the form tag will create an HTML form tag and it will also create the required input elements to submit the form to a particular endpoint, okay? So let's go to our theme code editor and then let's try it here in the theme.liquid once again. Now I don't need the table row anymore. Let's just get rid of that now. Instead, we can create the form tag. So create the form and then the form type that we're going to use is the contact. So we're going to use contact, okay? So create a single quote and then use the contact. So this will create the form for the contact form. So don't forget to end this with an end tag. So end form, just like that. So save it. And if you open your Shopify store, and if you open the inspect elements, inside of the body, inside of the main, we should have the following form tag. So as you can see, it created the following form tag with the input elements. So as you can see, the action is set to the following endpoint. So contact, contact form. So that's what the form tag generates. It creates the following form HTML element um, with the input elements required to submit this form. Okay, so all you need to do if you're going to create a form is to create the submit button and as well as the required input fields for the contact endpoint or for whatever endpoint you want to um, create. Say for example, um, we're using contact, right? So maybe we need to um, pass here an input field with like message, with like first name, with last name. If you want to learn more about the form tag, I highly recommend you take my Shopify theme development course where I explained and use um, the template files for the form tag. Because there are form tags that you will not be able to use without a template. Okay? So the next theme tag is the layout tag. So the layout tag is where you're going to use if you want to change the layout of the template file. By default, template files are using the theme.liquid layout file. So if you want to use a different layout file, then you have to create that inside of the layouts folder or a layout folder. So here we have the theme.liquid, right? So you can also create another layout or a new layout and call it um, alternate. So alternate and then click the create layout and you should have the duplicated theme that liquid, like so. And then if you wanna use this, you can use the layout tag. So let's do that here in the, say for example, let's do that in um, 404 that liquid, right over here. So I'm going to use the layout tag just above, and then let's reference the alternate. So theme dot alternate. So if you save that, and if you open your Shopify store, now since we're using the 404 template file, we can just visit a page that don't exist. So here in the URL bar, you can just type a random text like so. And if you open that page, we should be in the 404 page. So we can just close this and then, and then going back here in the code editor and then by opening the theme alternate that liquid, we can just customize this a little bit. So I'm going to delete the form tag here. Let's just change something here. I'm going to type hello world. 
Let's save this. Now the difference is we have here hello world, whereas the default um, layout or theme.liquid, we don't have the hello world. We have the form tag, okay? So that's the difference between these two. Now if you open the 404, as you can see here, we have the hello world. It's no longer using the theme.liquid. It's now using the theme.alternate.liquid. So that is the layout tag. It allows you to use a different layout file. This is great if you want to make a different layout for your pages. Say for example, for blogs, you wanna make, you wanna make it like full width. So that's when you should use the layouts, okay? So the next tag that we're going to use is the liquid tag. So the liquid tag will allow you to write multiple tags or multiple liquid codes within one set of delimiters. So what does this mean? So this means you can use the liquid tag to write the following um, to write the following codes without starting it with curly braces and percentage symbols, okay? So we can just test that ourselves here in the code editor and I'll open the 404.liquid. Let's just do it here, okay? So underneath of all of that, I'm going to use the liquid tag. So close it like so. Now you don't have to type and liquid, okay? It's not gonna work. Just type liquid and then as its parameter, this is where you're going to type the lines of liquid codes. Say for example, you can type an if statement or an if tag, and then you can just make here a condition like say for example, if, and then all underscore products, and then we can just use the product number one. So product hyphen one, and then close it. And then its title is not equal to product number two, then we should output something like the title. So all products and then product one and then its title, okay? And also don't forget to end it using the and if. So you can do it like that using the liquid tag. You don't have to start your if with like percentage and then curly braces. You don't have to do that if you're using liquid tag, okay? Now, if we save this, we should have the following error and that's because we are using an object here and objects don't work inside of the liquid tag. This is where you should be using the echo tag because we can't use a tag like this inside of the liquid tag. This is not going to work. So if you save this, it's still going to give you the same error, okay? So liquid syntax error, you can't um, use an object inside of the liquid tag. So if you wanna output something inside of the liquid tag, you will have to use the echo, so echo, like that. And don't forget to get rid of this. So now if you save this, and if you open your 404 page, we should have the product number one, okay? So that's the liquid tag. It will allow you to make multiple tags without typing the curly braces and then percentage symbols. The next tag that we're going to cover is the paginate tag. So the paginate tag, it will allow you to split an array of something like products, articles, search results across multiple pages. So it is necessary as part of the theme design. And also you are only limited to 50 results per page. So that's one thing that you need to keep in mind if you wanna use paginate tags or pagination. So the paginate tag works with the four tags. If you're going to use the paginate tag, make sure that inside of the paginate tag, you have the four tag, okay? So here we have the following example, paginate the collection that products by five. Now notice that it's using the following by parameter. So what it's saying is, I want to paginate the products by five. So five products per page. So this is what it means. So again, paginate the products by five products, five items, five items per page. And then inside of the paginate tag, we have the four tag. So what it's doing is the paginate tag will tell the four tag to loop only five times, okay? So once again, the paginate tag will tell the for tag to loop based on the value of the by parameter. If this is set to 10, then the paginate tag will tell the for tag to loop 10 times. And then 
it will also depend on the current page. If we are in page one, the for tag will render the first five or 10 products from the collection. If we are in the second page, then it's going to render the second five products of the collection and so on, okay? So let's try that here in our theme code editor. Um, I think we have a good example here inside of the collection.liquid. So if you open the collection.liquid inside of the templates folder, we have the following paginate tag. So paginate the collection that products by two. And inside of it, we have the heading title one. It's rendering the title of the collection. And then we have the following for tag. So it's looping for each product in the collection that products, we're rendering the product title, the price, the um, if it's sold out or not, and then the image of the product, okay? And also maybe I didn't mention before, the else tag, you can also use that um, with the for tag. Say for example, the for tag don't have an array. Say for example, the length of this array is zero. Then the for tag don't have any other choice but to render whatever's inside of the else tag. So you can use the else tag to check if the array is empty or not. Okay, and also with the paginate tag, you will have to render the pagination. So underneath of the four, you can render the paginate and use the default pagination filter. So we're not covering yet the filter, so we can just skip that for now. So let's see the output of this template. So go back here in the products page, open that in a new tab, and let's open the collections. So here, open the collections and then open the home page and click the view button here. So in this page, we have the title of the collection. We have the product number two, and then the product number one, we have the image of the product. If it's sold out, it is sold out. The image of the product of the product number one, and it is sold out, okay? So to check if this is working, we can go back to the theme code editor and change the value of the by parameter to one, because currently we don't have the pagination, the buttons for pagination, okay? We still don't have that. So if we change the value of the by parameter to one, this means only one product per page, okay? One product per page. So if I save this, and if we go back to the collection page, as you can see, we only have one item, and now we have the following pagination. So first page, we're currently in the first page and we can click the second page or the next page button. So if you click that, we should have the product number one here. So that's the pagination tag. It will allow you to split an array into multiple pages. So the next theme tag is the raw tag. So the raw tag, it will allow you to output a liquid code without it being parsed. So we have a good example here. We have the following raw tag and inside of it, it looks like it's supposed to render an object, right? It's using double curly braces and it's using a filter. But with raw, it's not going to parse it into a liquid object. The raw tag will treat it as a static text. So as you can see now in the output, it rendered the object instead of rendering 11. The next theme tag is the render tag. So the render tag, it will allow you to render a snippet from snippets folder of a Shopify theme. So we can try that here in our theme code editor. I'm going to close the 404.liquid and then the theme alternate.liquid, the theme.liquid as well. Let's just focus here in collection.liquid. So here in the snippets folder, we can create a new snippet file by clicking that button and by calling this um, example, just an example, okay? And then in this file, you can just type something like, hello world. And if you save that, we can use this file using the render tag. So let's open the collection.liquid and just above the paginate tag, we can use the render tag and then reference the file example. So we can just type here, example, like that. So now if I save this, and if you go back to the collection page, we should have the hello world at the very top. So hello world. So that's the render tag. Now you can use the render tag to reuse a code. So say for example, in a collection that liquid, we have the following codes, right? So you can use the snippet 
to reuse this not just here in the collection.liquid but also here in the collection list.liquid. So if we open the collection list.liquid, as you can see, we also have here the same code. So you can optimize this by using the render tag. So I'm going to create a new snippet file and I'll call this collection hyphen code. So click create snippet and then going back here in collection.liquid, I'm going to cut this off. So press control X, first highlight the div, okay? This div, highlight that, press control X or command X if you're using a Mac and then go back to collection code.liquid and paste it like so. Okay, and then you can save it and now go back to collection.liquid and use the render tag. So here, use the render tag, render, and then reference the file, collection, hyphen, code, and then close it. So let's save this. Now, if we open the collection page, we will lose the products. And the reason why we lost that, and that's because the snippet file don't know where to get the following object. So it doesn't know where is the product object. Now to get the product object, you will have to pass a variable through the parameter of the render tag. So let's go back to collection.liquid. And then here in this render tag, we can create a variable so after referencing the file, add comma, and then here create a variable. So we can call this variable product, and then for the value of this product, pass the product object. So product, okay? So this variable that we set here is the variable name that you're going to use in the snippet file. So say for example, we change this to snippet product. So this is the variable name that you're going to use in this snippet file. So instead of product.url, it should be snippet product.url, like that, okay? But I'm not going to change it to that. I'll change it back to product. And then instead of snippet product, I'll change it to product. Just keep in mind that this is the name they're going to use in this snippet file. And the product that we have here is the product created by the for tag, right over here, okay? So we're passing this to this variable. So now, if I save this, and if I refresh our collection page, we should have it back. Now the next theme tag is the section tag. So the section tag is kind of similar with the render tag. It just renders a section from the sections folder instead of the snippets folder. The render tag, it will allow you to render um, a snippet file, whereas section file, it will allow you to render a section from the sections folder. So you can use the tag and reference a file inside of the sections folder. So for example, here in the sections folder, I create a new file and call it um, custom section. And then in this file, we can just get rid of all of this and then type here, hello world. Save it. And then go back here in collection.liquid and instead of render, let's use section. So section. And then instead of example, let's use the custom hyphen section. So now if I save this, and if you open the collection page, we should have the same output. Let's change something inside of that section. So instead of just hello world, let's use a plus sign and just some gibber, gibberish. So let's save this and let's go back to the collection page and refresh it. And as you can see, we have the following. Now the last tag that you can use is the style tag. The style tag it will allow you to render an HTML style tag with a Shopify data attribute. So if we go back to the theme code editor, let's open the, let me just close all of this. Let's open the index.liquid. So if you open this file, as you can see, we have the following style tag, right? So you can replace this tag with the style tag of liquid. So style, like so, and then close it here. So, and style. So this will have the same output, but the difference is you'll now be able to use an object inside of this style tag. Say for example, you can change the color of the background. So here you can use an object like 
a setting. So say for example, you're in a section and you can use a section settings to change the background color and then you'll be able to customize that through the customizer, okay? But I'm not going to cover that yet. I'll do that in the future. We're not rushing this up. So I'm going to save this and let's open our homepage. Let's just remove this from our URL. And if you open our inspect elements, and if you open the main tag, as you can see now, we have the following style tag with a data attribute, data Shopify. So there you have it, that's the theme tags. In the next lesson, we will learn how to create variables.